And welcome, 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 welcome. I am Deandra Reviews, Deandra Reviews, Deandra Reviews. And this is ASMR, Reiki Movie Reviews, dedicated to The Witcher. May this flame inspire you as today's Reiki is about accepting love. I think that was a, a core theme of season two. Accepting love surprises, accepting how it surprises you and how it you release it and how you receive it. This is Lepidolite, which is for depression, perfect. And this is my sandalwood sage um, that I hope when you see the smoke clears you out and makes you feel better. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. I don't know, I mean, seeing Gerald kind of become daddy to Siri, daddy Gerald, played by Henry Cavill. In season two, he takes Siri as his charge to protect, and naturally, because Gerald is, Gerald is a perfect example of every man that tries to act like he's tough because he's strong and he's powerful and he doesn't have any feelings, but who doesn't have feelings? You're a human being. You are human, you are human, you are human, you are human. Feel, 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 feel. You are human, you are human, you are human, you are human. Feel, 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 feel. I've always felt that depression was the core of oppression and repression. You know, they're all like siblings in the, the Prussian Olympics. Um, and they compete against each other for dominance. But I feel like depression is the core. And what depression does is that it makes you stay in your ego. It makes you believe things that are irrational. You know, for Geralt, part of what makes Henry Cavill so good as this character and even better in season two is not that he looks great in bathtub scenes. Not only that. <laughs> it's that I think he embodies how powerful we are, how powerful we can be, but how our own false ideas on what it is to love whether we can love, whether we can be loving or can receive love, trips us. Because immediately, he is paternal with Siri, played by Freya Allen. And he, he doesn't just, you don't protect somebody if you don't care about them, if you don't love them. You don't tell them what to do, to run, even sacrifice yourself for them if you didn't love them. And it's that that struggle to acknowledge love that trips him up because he's, he's, you know, he's kind of like the coal over her diamond, you know? He's just trying to make sure that she gets all the shine possible before she becomes powerful, as powerful as she can be and, and is kind of unleashed on the world to shine on. And I think that what made this season so interesting. This is Red Tigress, perfect for protection, especially if you want to protect yourself, protect your power as you're discovering it, because that's what's so hard about life. I feel that what makes life a journey is that we have to discover our power for all that it is, for how powerful it can be, for the many layers that it is. And what makes us so in danger is that sometimes we can really meet someone that sees our power before us or kind of tells us what we can be. And even though we know it, for some reason, because we're so insecure, them saying it is the only way we feel it's valid. And what's so, what makes Freya Allen's performance as series so good 
is that she's fearless. She doesn't need Geralt to tell her that she's powerful. She knows it. What trips her up is the journey. How powerful can I be? How powerful should I be? Because even that's a question. Should I have so much? Can I handle so much? Even though you want to do more, something about success, something about power can trip us up. Can we actually be so great, even though we want to be? And what makes her brave is that that question that takes most of us out, that makes most of us feel kind of too unworthy to even try. What's so good about that question, about her, is that she's brave enough to kind of put that question to the side. And kind of shaking away any negative vibes. I've always said that bravery is learning how to carry your fear. Understanding it's not something that you necessarily get rid of. It's just something you learn how to carry and in turn make less. There's no such thing as a fearless man, but there is such thing as a brave one. And the brave one, the brave man, is wise enough to know that he can't be without fear. It's a part of his humanity, but he's strong enough to get through the fear. And that's serious fearless. The women of this show are fearless, actually. Jennifer, Anya, Charlotta comes back and she's kind of, I feel like she's symbolic of what happens when you actually get successful. You're kind of like, oh wow, this is real. You know, you always see these interviews with rich and famous people discussing about how fame is and all that it's cracked up to be wealth isn't that great and we're all like sure yeah sure okay says the person who has it but sometimes I wonder if the feeling they're talking about is not just that you know fame and money don't equate happiness you're just a bigger version of you and if you weren't healed that means bigger wounds if you weren't ever confident at your worst doesn't necessarily mean you'll be confident at your best. But I feel what is trippy about Jennifer is that now she knows her power. Now she owns her power. And it's kind of like my power can protect life, but my power can't give life. And that's the thing about power. It can do a lot except give life. You know, it can make you feel alive, but love is life. Life is love. Our power can invigorate her. It can make her feel safe and give others safety. But as she dreams of Geralt, dreams of a family with him, even has visions of Siri. There's this feeling of, can that be? Can I be powerful and happy? Because happiness is power, but power is not happiness. What is power? That's what I felt with the analysis. Like, you have all these magical beings that. I'm going to get you some blue Chalcedony. I love this. This is for visions. This is for... And I think that in order to love, you got to be like Jennifer. You have to kind of start visualizing that you can have love. So, I'm going to swoop in. Visualize that love. Visualize that love. Visualize that love, visualize that love. 
Visualize that love, visualize that love. Visualize that love, visualize that love. Visualize that love, visualize that love. Visualize that love, visualize that love. I feel like with Yennefer, throughout the season, you know, she gets kidnapped at least three times. <laughs> she faces evil spirits that try to tempt her to fall. I'll give you what you want if you give me your power. Because nothing harms power or stops you from realizing it. Then, if I can be honest, desire. Desire is a trip. Desire is a trip. I'm going to give you carnelian. We're going to do some cord cutting. And I felt like... What... What stumps her and kind of makes her as brave as Siri is that she never lets her desire, if Siri doesn't let her fear of her power stop her, Jennifer doesn't let her desire for love stop her. And I thought that was so interesting that they kind of made desire and fear the worst enemy of people that are truly powerful because we think that I think we live in a world that believes fear protects us. You should be scared. That means you're safe. I mean, I think as a writer, I remember getting advice that if you don't like your advice, your writing, that means you're a good writer. And I don't know. I didn't know how I felt about that because part of what I want peace. And we can't say that the tortured artist, the torture stops them from their greatness and then say that you, you're doing great if you actually are tortured. There's something hypocritical about that. I mean, I can't figure it out. I want you, as I cut all these negative cords, I want you to feel like this carnelian is, is infusing within you courage. Courage and bravery and clarity. Because this is a transformational stone. It makes you brave enough to change make the changes you desire and this season Jennifer is in for I think she's fighting for change she's fighting for everyone else to change if that makes sense like I think ha burning half a forest down will make you defeating a 4,000 man army will make you a changed person but something weird happens when you actually accept your power, embrace it and elevate in it, you realize how many people are stuck, how many people that even supported you when you were on the rise don't like you now that you are risen. And I found that fascinating. I found that absolutely fascinating. I think the cast is exceptional. And I think that what rounds it out that these two women kind of aligning with Geralt this season is that Geralt is out of the both of them for all his fear and for all his desire. He never stops being brave and that's what makes him connected with everyone, but he can't give in to love. He's so loving. I mean, we even meet Vesemir who's like his father that taught him. That taught him how to be a witcher. And we meet all these witchers and they're all hanging out and they all admire Geralt because he's kind of Vesemir's favorite. And he just, he embodies bravery to him, to them. But the irony is that he, he feels so alone. And that's what Siri, what makes him feel so complex about Siri, and what makes him long for Yennefer. This feeling of everyone thinks I'm brave, I am brave. Everyone thinks I'm powerful, I am powerful, but I'm really scared of family. 
I'm really scared of investing in people. And even though I am because I care for them, I protect them, I hold back because I am a coward. I am the bravest coward. I can't help that my heart loves, but I'm too coward to let it love fully. And I loved that message. They send us the first six episodes. And I thought that everything felt upped. I felt like visually everything was better. There were more magical creatures. There was more balance between plot and, and, and the creatures. If that makes sense. Like I felt like everything was balanced character development seeing more of the mystical world and elements of the witcher and the plot and meeting new people i felt like everything was just right pacing depth amount just clinking away clinking away overall uh, season two is a win for me i'm very curious now that we're wrapping up very curious how Siri, Yennefer, and Geralt are going to line up because there seems to be kind of a, an ultimate clashing. Siri is destined to be a powerful, powerful being. Yennefer already is a powerful being and it's kind of like, am I meant to guard her or stop her? And Geralt is, is the bridge between them the bridge of love and he has to accept love in order to show them that they can live in love and that's the last thing he wants to accept it's really fascinating when you think about it and that's how I want you to think about you you are a bridge to love believe it or not you connect to people with love and you connect people with each other and with themselves through your own love and you can't have that. You can't be the bridge crossing over, crossing through, crossing with people unless you accept to love fully. Love is in a half empty situation. It is a full cup. And like the sage, like the smoke, I want you to fill with love, fill with love choose love every time every day every moment for yourself love 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 don't be Geralt <laughs> love love fully so that one day you can not only be powerful but you could be life power the youthfulness of power is that it protects life the youthfulness of love is that it gives it. Love is life. Power should only just protect it. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Enjoy The Witcher out December 17th on Netflix.